Welcome back for today's landscape editing tutorial, which is on this image from the Grand Canyon. I know it's been quite a while since my last upload here on YouTube. And for the past month, I was actually on a road trip across America. And so I thought some of the images from my trip, I would show you all in a brand new series called Let's Edit. So today I'm gonna to focus on one of my favorite photos from my trip, which was taken at the Grand Canyon. For this particular photo, what do I see here? Well, number one, it's very hazy. And so it was very hard to actually capture a lot of detail in uh, some of the canyon. But what you notice here is that the color scheme, the color palette that's here, what do we have most of? We have very rich earth tones. So that's going to be my focus for this particular edit and getting a very nice bronzy kind of golden, golden tone for this photo. So the first thing I'm going to do for this image is we're gonna start from our white balance. Normally I don't always go in order, but for today we'll do that. So because we want a warmer image, we're actually gonna take our temperature and make it a lot warmer. So right from doing that, you see we're already getting that, that nice orange glow. And that's what I want here. Now as for my tint, we're actually gonna decrease that a little bit and take it a little bit more towards the green side, which kind of takes out some of that bluish purplish kind of tint and kind of adds a little bit warmth in going to kind of the green side of the tent. Now take out a little bit of the contrast here. Go to about negative 21, that's pretty good. And then I wanna start getting a little bit of detail back as much as I can in the background, but we're not gonna focus on that too much. So I just wanna decrease my highlights a little bit. And then I want to increase my shadows. And then I'll also push up my white level here because I wanna make, make the image a little bit brighter than what it is. So we'll give a little bit of life to our whites here. And then the next thing I want to add some nice blacks. Everyone knows that's a big signature of mine to have that really nice black level in my images. So because we're dealing with a lot of texture here, I really want to increase that even more so we're going to increase this quite significantly. And I'll also do the same with clarity because that gives me even more depth to my edges. And so because of the loss of detail that we have because of the smoke and haze that was in the area, you know, that really gives us a little bit of punch on those edges of, of the little bit of the canyon that we do have detail for. And then next, to kind of minimize some of the haze, we'll run dehazing and we'll bring that down ever so slightly. Okay, and that looks good. Next, we'll come down to my favorite part, the tone curve. Now, this is using the, the latest version of Lightroom. And so there's been kind of a modification to tone curve. So it looks a little bit different than in some of my previous tutorials. To actually go and select my point curve, I have to make sure that I have the point curve selected up here. And so we're going to change this and use one of my presets and we're going to use the street curve. So now I'm actually gonna click the paramatic curve and what that gives me is where I can actually adjust the regions. And so for the region, I actually wanna increase the shadows here. And so we're going to increase that to about 50 or so percent. And that looks good. And then we'll come down to the HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. So what we're going to do here is give my reds a little bit more of an orange hue there. My yellows, I want those to be a little bit more, more orange, kind of earthy looking. So as you can see, you know, that's kind of a little bit more red. If we go the other way, turns it more green, and we don't want to do that. So we'll go a little bit more towards the, the orange side there. That looks pretty good. Our green here, don't really have any green that's there. Uh, let me just move the slider. Oh, we actually do, a little bit on the trees. 
So I actually want to maybe keep a little bit of that color. So let's go more towards the green. And then the aqua will have a little bit down there too. We'll actually go more the green direction here as well. And then some of our purplish kind of magentas that you kind of see here in the canyon. Uh, we'll make those a little bit more of the reddish orange as well. So let's just ever so slightly bring those across. Okay, awesome. Now, next, we'll increase our red saturation a bit here. And then we'll actually come down and, you know, I think I might want to desaturate a little bit of these. Now, let's, let's bring these down. I'm just having a feeling for that. Yeah, let's do that. Now, for my luminance, let's push up some of those colors. We'll increase the orange level here. Do the same for the yellow level. Okay, a little bit in the greens and aqua and our blue and decrease some of the luminance in our purple. Okay, so the next one of my favorite aspects of Lightroom is the split toning. And so what I want to do is really get that nice kind of golden bronze glow going. So I'm going to increase my hue and put it more in like the yellowish orange um, area of my, my kind of adjustment here. And then we'll increase the saturation. So this controls how intense that is. So if I go all the way to the 100, that's what it does in my highlight area. And we don't want to go that far but we'll actually come down to about 10%. That actually looks really good. And then we'll do the same thing for our shadows. Come about the same area and we'll add just, just about the same amount that we had in our highlights as well. And then next for our sharpness, our detail. Now I'm a, I'm a big person when it comes to sharpening. I don't know why I don't have to, because if I zoom in, look at all the detail we have here. There's, there's really no need. I don't know why I do it. I really don't. Like, it's, it's just one of those things that I do. But it's, it's just a, you know, you, you make your art the way that you want to. And that's how I like to do mine. So I'm going to add a little bit of sh sharpness here. And then I'm going to run the mask. Now, what does masking do? What this does is the sharpest areas of your image, as you increase the mask, it takes the sharpness off of areas that are not perfectly in focus. In this instance, this is what is in focus. This in the background, not so much. So I'm actually taking the sharpness away from this background here because that's not the central focus of the image. It's this region here. So I don't want the sharpening to go all over the image. I just want it in the area that is already sharp. That makes sense. So we're going to keep it that way. Now for noise reduction, I don't I think I was maybe at ISO 800. We're just going to run a little bit. I usually run 20-25% on oh, most of my images. Uh, just just to kind of take away a little bit of artifacts. But in this situation, having a little bit of noise, it's not a bad thing. You already have a ton of texture. Having noise isn't a bad thing here. If I didn't do it, it's not a problem. So we're going to run our lens correction. So we'll just enable the profile corrections and there it is. It already has our lens there, which was the Loxia 50. And then next we're going to come down to our vignette here. Now I am going to run a little bit on the post crop. I didn't do it in the, in the lens correction. We're going to come down to about 16, bring our midpoint all the way down. I'm going to take my highlights, bring it all the way to hundred. And then we're going to feather that as well and bring that to 100. And then we're going to adjust our roundness here. So once I've done that, that's it for Lightroom. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save our photo and then jump into Photoshop and finish up there. So now we've brought our image into Photoshop. And what I wanna do here is just a few minor adjustments before we actually export our final JPEG shot. One thing that I do is kind of a little bit redundant. Why do I say that? Because I'm actually going to adjust things that I just adjusted in Lightroom. I know it's crazy, isn't it? But that's just what I do. That's how I get the images that I do. It's crazy, it's quirky. I actually know this, I admit it. But 
this is this is my process it's not perfect it's just what fits me so i go into image then adjustments and then we'll go to levels and then i have my presets that are here as well and i think i'm gonna run maybe seven and see what that looks like so what seven does it has a little bit of increase in my highlights and then i also have a little bit of my shadow adjustments that it increases to give me a little bit more contrast there so sometimes it's a little bit too harsh in this situation it could be a little bit too much so let's go to 7s which decreases the shadow contrast a bit but keeps my highlights the the same amount and um, sometimes i'll tweak them as needed but in this situation i'm not going to do that so 7s looks pretty good we'll save that one we'll go back up to image and now go to adjustments and curves and i also have presets here so i'm going to do custom 2 which just adds another another bit of oomph to my contrast it, it almost looks very minimal because you really can't see it that much uh, but it just adds a little bit more i think this is perfect i love it as is and that's one of my edits of my grand canyon photo so try out some of these edits adjustments on your landscape images or if you go to the grand canyon try out this edit and see if it works for you so until next time i'll see you all in the next video